Okay then, so in celebration of uh, International Women's Day 2001, who better to provide a female perspective of the world than our very own City College Plymouth um, CEO and Principal, Jackie Grubb. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Charles, and good morning, everyone. Um, so just um, briefly give a, um, an introduction on yourself. Um, what do you enjoy about your role and what do you do to relax? Okay. So, I'm the Chief Executive Officer and the Principal of City College Plymouth is an absolute privilege. And to lead such a vibrant, passionate organisation is truly humbling. So, you know, I'm really privileged, as I say, to be in that position. Um, leading a large organisation, though, it is really, really important, like anybody really, to have a balance in your life also. And health and wellness is very dear to me. And I think it should overarch absolutely everything that we do. So I do take that really seriously. So first of all, nutrition and food and water is something that I really make sure that I eat the right foods and I drink plenty of water on a daily basis. Um, how I find time to relax, probably, my biggest love is um, my family and um, also my yoga. So I make sure that um, I spend the right amount of time with my family and um, be with my family on the times that I'm not at work. So I've got a husband and I've got two children and also I'm a granny. So having the privilege of being a granny and looking after a little one is just a truly amazing experience. Um, further to that, my love of yoga. Um, I do yoga most days, and that's what I do regularly um, to allow myself to relax. And I also love the sea. So I love sea swimming. I love doing yoga by the sea. And living in a place like Plymouth, then that's not too difficult. Exactly, that's brilliant. So go right back to the start. Briefly describe your childhood. Um, where were you born? Have you got any siblings? Sort of your primary, secondary school experience and any interests and hobbits you had, hobbies, sorry, you had as uh, growing up? Yeah, thank you for that. Well, I grew up in um, a village in Worcestershire and I always think of my upbringing as being one of Enid Blyton's famous five. Now, not many people will probably remember those books, but those were the books that we read a lot when I was younger. And because I lived in a small village, climbing trees, building dens, um, you know, walking up hills, that was a lot of, we took a lot of our time doing those outdoor um, experiences. Um, living in that village, though, I did live on a council estate and I did have a, a working... Um, I did have a working class background and both of my parents worked. And also I found myself having to do my very own chores as I grew up. So having that sort of background, I really do feel prepared for me in what I'm doing now. Um, and spending a lot of time outside, I think really turned me into the person that I am today. I mean, I can completely relate to that. I've had a very similar, um background growing up in but not in Worcester but in Oxfordshire so, okay. uh, you know a small village so yeah that, that's absolutely brilliant I can just imagine you doing that that's something uh, that I would have been doing as well and when I was younger so um taking all that into my mind and obviously through your schooling um what sort of career did you have in mind when you were younger so when I was younger my ambition was to begin with that I always wanted to be a Blue Peter presenter so when I was younger, I was very creative and liked to do things. And I suppose that stemmed from my childhood of building dens and climbing trees and wandering through the fields um, with my friends as we were younger. So I initially set out of really wanting to, as I say, be a Blue Peter presenter. And then um, when I was about 11, um, I had a love of French and um, languages while I was at school. And I think it was because I had a really good French teacher and um, became really good at French. So then I thought I want to be an interpreter. Um, so that was something that um, I focused on for a while. 
and then changed my mind again, as people do, and um, I wanted to be a makeup artist for the BBC. So I wanted to um, spend my time preparing all those people ready to go on set or to go on to films. Um, and that's something that I did pursue when I did go to college when I was younger. So when you actually got in that position, can you briefly describe your pro uh, progression through um, compulsory school into employment? Yep, so um, I went to the normal primary school, then middle school and secondary school. And I left school at 16 and went to my local further education college. And um, because I had the ambition of wanting to be a makeup artist, um, I went to college to do makeup artistry. And um, during that time there, I learned how to make wigs and how to do makeup and, um, and to prepare myself for, um, for that career. Um, and while I was learning at college, I continued um, to learn. And um, part of that then, I went into the health side of things. So I studied um, health and sports therapy. And um, then following on that, I got my first teaching job in my very early 20s. So um, while I was working in industry, I got two hours a week part-time teaching at my local college. And that's where my teaching career um, first started off. And then several years later, I landed my first job as a teacher. And um, one of those teaching experiences was um, teaching anatomy and physiology to the football academy. So um, that was real a real experience. And then I pursued my career on then in terms of um, then I became um, a course manager, a head of department, a head of faculty. And during those times that I was at college, I wanted to make myself even better. And um, I also applied um, to be an external verifier, which is somebody that comes in and um, checks the working colleges. And the only reason why I wanted to do that was to make me better at the day job. So I worked that alongside my full-time teaching position. And then I became a head of department. Um, and when I became a head of department, um, I was also approached by Ofsted and I became an Ofsted inspector part-time, again, that really supported um, my career as being a head of department. And then about 15 years ago, um, I got my first job as a senior manager um, at Swindon College in the Southwest. And I went into that job as a director. And that took me away from all the health and creative industries. And my half of the college was all the STEM relating subjects. So when I look back now, it just put me in such good stead to have an overall um, view and experience of every subject, whether it's creative, whether it's health, whether it's STEM related. And the learning that took place around that was just an absolute privilege. And I really, really enjoyed it. And then from then on, I became a deputy principal and then a principal and then a chief executive. And that's where I find myself here today. Oh, that's an amazing story. I mean, that really is quite inspirational. Um, so did you have any like outside or internal influences while you were um, progressing through your sort of uh, educational and um, employment journey? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. And first of the first um, people that I would say that influenced me were my parents, because um, the reason why I feel they influenced me was because they were both working class and they worked their socks off to provide for me and my siblings. And they really taught us as role models how hard work pays off. Um, so from the initial outset, you know, that's what I was looking at in terms of the role modeling of my parents. So that hard work and that perseverance was embedded in me at a very early age. And then along the way, I talked about my French teacher at school. And I also had another teacher in um, religious education um, that was really good with people and really taught us how to debate and speak our truth professionally. So again, those couple of teachers really inspired me to be the person that I am today. 
And then the people that I've worked with along the way through my career have really supported me in terms of getting to where I've got to. And some advice that I would give to everybody is, is to always have a role model and a mentor and a coach of somebody that you can discuss things privately, personally and confidentially, and that really will support you in your aspirations. That's excellent. Um, so obviously I need to touch on certain subjects. So um, what issues have you found the most difficult to overcome during your life journey as a prominent and influential woman? Yeah, I mean, that, that is again a good question. I suppose I'd put a general statement on that, Chaz, really, for, really, for people to really reflect on. And what I would say is that we will all experience different challenges and hurdles as we go along. But the mantra that I always put myself under is, is don't ever undervalue yourself and don't be afraid to pursue what you want. And whatever the challenge is, if you stick to that mantra, um, then you will not go wrong. No, I think that's yeah, that's really good. Um, really good sound advice. Um, um, so finally, if you could give your younger self any good advice, what would it be? <laughs> well, ironically, I was looking at the theme for the 2021 International um, um, Women's Day, and the theme is this year is to choose to challenge. So again, if I think of my career and I look back on my career, always choose to challenge. And I already mentioned it earlier on. You can be professional, but you must challenge what you either don't believe in or pursue what you do believe in. And I give everybody the advice to always believe in yourself and always speak your truth. And then that will make you into the authentic person that you need to be. Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, obviously, that's quite a sort of inspirational um, journey that you've had. Um, you know, your background growing up as um, in, in a council estate in um, what I can recognise as a sort of like leafy sort of suburb. So um, quite a quiet bringing up. So you know, your, your story is inspirational to us all and um, we really acknowledge the good work that you're doing uh, at City College Plymouth as the CEO and principal. And it's been a, um, a pleasure getting an insight into your life today, Jackie. So um, thank you very much for joining us and contributing to International Women's Day for um, 2021. Thank you. That's my pleasure, Chaz. Take care. Thank you.